sport requires effort, sweat and strong will, and Macron knows it. A leading global company with the Italian DNA in the production and sale of sportswear, when Macron first entered the sports world in 1971, he was a small yet strong player. Since then, Macron has been growing at a very fast pace, supporting teams, sportsmen and women at all levels, working hard to supply them with the best technical products to help improve their performances. With over 4 million pieces of stock available in our Italian warehouse, including an extensive range of on-field, off-field and free-time products, we cater for everyone from amateurs to professional sporting organisations. Ranked third most prominent football brand by UEFA, Macron keeps expanding its presence worldwide and now even includes Croatian giants Hajduk Split, Hainel Prva Liga outfit MK Šibenik, as well as Melbourne-based Croatian community club MK Bunker, amongst its ever-growing international family. And there are more to come. Work hard, play harder, Macron, your next teamwear partner. For more information, visit our website at www.macronvic.com.au or call us now on 1-800-MACRON. Good evening, very warm welcome to you, and it is a warm one indeed. To episode six of the Oz Crow Soccer Show, it is flying along, it is absolutely flying along. We're into episode six now, um, and who can believe it's just been already a month and a half. My name is Tonchi Prusat, I'm one half of your uh, co-hosting team, and uh, Josip Zilic, he's running a little bit late and might have been caught in the... Um, in the uh, the thunderstorms up in the on the Gold Coast or the rain or what you're not not too sure, but um, he will be joining us very very shortly. As to will be a whole host of guests tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's a massive show planned for you tonight. It's got a very strong South um, St Albans flavour, um, and um, Josip is in the green room. Um, if he can hear me now, jump out and jump back on. For some reason, I can't see. I'm not sure, sure why that is the case. Um, we've got a f big show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a St. Albans-themed um, episode tonight. It's proudly sponsored by the St. Albans Dinamo Soccer Club, and they got their, pro, uh, their 2022 campaign, NPL Victoria campaign, off to, a, off to a very good start over the weekend. And, um, well, we'll be talking to their president, Ilya Dragicic a little bit later on, and Captain Courageous as well, uh, Michael Grgic, who will be joining us as well. Um, he'll be coming on a, a little bit later on. He was the goal scorer of the uh, the lone goal between um, St. Albans and Port Melbourne Sharks. And um, without further ado, it is a big, big, big warm welcome, big tropical wet, wet welcome to uh, Josip Zilic. Josip, how are you, mate? Um, pretty good, thanks, Tunch. It's uh, been a bit of a wet and wild day today, but uh, not, nothing too drastic. But uh, I'm not sure what, what happened there. I was seeing you. Or I could communicate and chat with you, but uh, let's just take it as it is. It's, it's the modern world today. We haven't got a simple um, phone with a cord. And we just go... <laughs> I was going to say maybe the camera didn't like you, leaving a little bit of that, you know, three, four days. The fuzz. Malo, the malo fuzz. Yen or, or just uh, going for a new look? Oh, look, you know what? A little bit of both. So, um, <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to see how much salt and pepper from the top could match the bottom, but yeah, I, think look, it, I think it's blending in nicely. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon you're getting in training for being Father Christmas, another uh, yeah, nine or yeah. so months to go before that, huh? 
Yeah, no worries. I'll, I'll step up for a role. I've, I've done a few of those at the dorm in Geelong. <laughs> Some, it was a couple of my uh, uh, nephews and nep- I say nieces uh, in Geelong. Hi, right. Sian and Emma. But uh, they they used, they used to spot me when I used to dress up at the dorm in Geelong with Santa. Good. Good stuff, mate. We've got lots of stories to get through tonight. Um, we mentioned we've got um, um, Ilya Dragicevic, St. Albans Dinamo president, the newly elected St. Albans president. He'll be joining us very, very shortly. We've got yep. Michael Gurgic, the captain, and we've also got a young gun, a former St. Albans Dinamo junior. Um, you know a lot about him. Who's going to be our special guest later on tonight? Uh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation with young Michael Bulic, uh, yep. former St. Albans and, and Melbourne Knights junior, and he's been, you know, over the years been selected into the victory academy so we'll, we'll hear about his story how it, how it came about and what he's up to currently uh, recent experiences we want to give people the insight especially that young group coming through between the ages of 16 yeah. and 20 thereabouts give them some insights about what, what people have to go through what are the, some of the sacrifices you need to make in, if you want to step up into this environment Indeed, mate. Uh, we've got a huge show, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're not going to we're not going to muck around. We're going to get straight into it. Um, Josip's going to get step away for a couple of seconds as he gets himself all ready for the uh, news desk. That's coming up very very shortly, folks. Don't go away. It's a huge huge show tonight. Um, we're going to be right back with the news desk. Josip Zilic. G'day, everyone. Uh, yes, lots of news coming around from the country this this week. Uh, I will start with a slightly sombre note, though. We do know that our parish priests are fantastic people and they do a lot for our community. In recent days and recent weeks, we've heard the news of uh, Father Velichastny, uh, or Father Yossi Vranjes, uh, trying to recover from COVID and having a hard time with it. Uh, I appreciate seeing all the messages from the community being shared about, out there to pray for his welfare and to pray for his recovery. So uh, please, please join in your prayers. Keep him in your thoughts at night and during the day so that he can recover quickly. But also, in sad news too, uh, Fra Vlado Novak from Sydney. Uh, many people will know him as the parish leader at Summer Hill, a fantastic person, uh, had passed away throughout the week at the age of 79, uh, a longtime servant of the Sydney community. Um, our condolences go out to the community and his family. And why we mention these two people, our priests are being in, integral in our football soccer community. They are more often than not our number one ticket holders and they always share the news that is coming out of our football community amongst our Croatian community. And we can't thank them enough for the work they do. So yeah. please keep them in your thoughts. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, um, some... Uh... Great stories over the years of our various um, par- parish priests getting involved with the uh, with the um, Croatian football clubs, and they've been the pillar of um, of a lot of those clubs and a lot of um, a lot of our communities around Australia. Um, let's now move yep. along to football topics, Josip, and look, we're going to start right down the bottom, aren't we? Down in Tasmania. Let's go to Tassie. Glenorchy Knights. They've kicked off their summer cup pre-season competitions through a few different age groups, including the seniors. But one to note is a development team, which is that uh, under-16 group. As you know, don't you always have a soft spot for this age group? But uh, they got a 1-0 win over Olympia Warriors, who's a, uh, an arch rival of theirs. So I was glad to see that news come through during the week and a reminder to people to go get your memberships out of Glenorchy mm. Knights. They've got a range of packages you can choose from. So get onto the social media and, and pick yourself a package to get, get behind the teams. Let's just head over the Bass Strait to Victoria, mate. Oh, a lot uh, happening in Victoria. Lots oh, happening look, in Victoria. Yes, that's right, mate. Uh, look, the NPL kicked off and we saw Melbourne Knights uh, be warmly received by Dandenong City. And nice to see the community out and about in large numbers mm. um, getting together again because after a terrible time we had with COVID, it's good to see everyone coming together. Uh, the game itself started off quite electric and quite lively. Um, Dandy probably had a chance, a couple of chances early on within 20 minutes. However, Melbourne Knights, they really took the steering wheel and just kept driving over the top of it. Um, Dandy kept spilling the ball out through the middle and Knights were there to pick it up and they're relentless in their attack. 5-0 win for them. Young uh, Frangi, who's come from uh, Sydney way in, in the New South Wales NPL, um, looked really lively. It looked, looks like the right character for him up front. Big guy, fast, good with the ball. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, the, that's the result for Dandy to start the season off. 
Knights go off to Friday night facing Avondale. Um, and they uh, both want to see who the, who's going to set the former and the, uh, set the former light in the NPL in Victoria at night stadium, 7.30 p.m. Go book yourself a table at the Melbourne Croatia Social Club and get in the festive mood before the match. Dandenong have another derby on their hands in St Albans, whom we'll catch up with a little later on uh, in the show. Uh, so nice way for Dandy to start the season with a couple of derbies and we'll, uh, we'll get more news on the preparations for that match from St Albans' perspective later on. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a photo there of St Albans. Uh, we had Kruni Rajov saying it was going to be a tough first up encounter against Port Melbourne. But um, oh, I tell you what, uh, Dinamo did very, very well. Like I said, we'll talk a little bit, a little, little bit later on um, in the show about that. But, um, yeah, fantastic 1-1 um, one, one result first up against a, yeah. well, a top four, top five side um, in Port Melbourne Sharks. Now, yeah, um, yeah. Now, Gorsbich Bears were our first club that, um, mentioned, and they were involved in something amazing, which we'll find out more about in yeah. weeks to come. But um, a trip to uh, Gippsland, um, your CP. Gippsland went to Trailgan, played against Trailgan City. Uh, but I know this is dear to uh, President Daza, Dario's uh, heart, to go down to um, go over to Gippsland and visit the Croatian community and just reconnect with some of his family and friends that, out that way. And it was nice to see Gorsbich uh, take the game on and w win at 1-0. But uh, irrespective of the result and the way it was, it was nice to see the community come out for them as well and be re warmly received. Yeah, um, so we, we've got a couple of photos there. We'll we'll go through that whilst we go through the rest of the um rest of the um, news items. Yep. But um, yeah, great to see some of the stuff there happening in the um yeah. in the foreground, background. Nice what you see. Strathmore split had a big news this week, uh, just today, announcing that uh, Brendan Santalab is going to take the reins from the departing Hrvoje Matkovic, who's done a marvelous job over the last four years or so. So we wish Hrvoje uh, all the best in his next steps. But also, uh, well done to Brendan for stepping up. Uh, it's great to see that and looking inwards to see what solutions they've got. And I think Brendan will be a, 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 a viable option for them and get the boys on the winning ways. Yeah, someone who has played um, at the highest level, both at NSL level and um, A-League level as well. Um, yep. There he is, Brendan. Um, and I'm, I'm told it's Shantalab as well from um, the good old Wool Wollongong Croatian community. They hail from the, there. Yeah. South Coast Yossi United. Yep. Yossi Pe, I'm, I'm, I'm itching to say this. I, I can't wait any longer. I have to say it. But uh, next week, Strathmore Split will be our club in focus. Thank you yes. to Ozcro Imports. We will be talking to um, the man, the legend, Ante Stipic, who is uh, one of the pillars of the um, the club there at Strathnava Reserve. And um, I think Dave, there's. I think there's dust in the club rooms that's older than <laughs> that's younger than Ante. Yeah. Yeah, be, between him, between him, Jimmy Tabakis, the Hrvatsky Zet, and uh, Ante Dragovic, I mean that is just a, a star-studded um, committee there. But you know what, um, Yossi, they've got a very, very interesting management model that is probably very unique in the way they run it. They don't have a president, um, which is very strange, which is un very unique. We will find out more next week what that actually involves um, hey, and how they problem. run it. Yeah, and um, it's it's very fascinating. But on top of that, we will also be, wait for it, talking to the man that's on the screen now, Brendan yes. Shantalab as well. Like, um, I cannot wait. That is going to be bloody good. That is going to be what so a, good. So uh, what, a, what a show that's going to be. be. Yeah, absolutely. Cannot wait. All right, so, moving along. We'll turn the, turn the bus to Princess Highway, mate. Let's head off to North, North Geelong, who had a – their women had a nice resounding 7-0 win over Ballarat. So well done to Ahmed and Ando and Ivan uh, and the teams for their performance. The senior men had a 2-0 yep. win over Western United. And I, I hear a cracking goal from Luka Jutkovic, so a volley from 20 or so metres out. Um, I, I, guess, I guess over the days that 20 becomes 25. So, you know, that's what happens with strikers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that's... And also they had a local hit out um, last night, um, leading 3-1, uh, you know, mixed up the team a bit with the youngsters and experienced and uh, ended up going down 5-3. But good to see um, Stewie Begg and the, and the coaching outfit just trying to make sure that everyone gets a lot of run in their legs uh, ahead of a long year. Yeah, now they've got another practice game coming up this Saturday against uh, Melbourne Victory, believe it Melbourne or not, um, yeah. the NPL side. Um, and there are a couple of Croatian lads in there. 
One of them, Anthony Leban, a former North Geelong junior. And also our guest later on tonight, um, Marco, Marco uh, Bulic, who will be also talking about that game. So uh, if you're down Geelong way and looking forward to not only seeing your team in action, but also seeing some uh, um, you know, young gun Australian Croatian talent, Elko Park is the place to be this um, this Saturday. So a lot happening there, Yossi. Now let's move across the border to South Australia. Good old SA. Um, yeah, their season like started on the weekend. Yeah, a one all draw. Um, I, I don't think they'll be too disappointed in that. When you're uh, kicking away and you've got a bit of a different lineup and you uh, wanted to work out um, who's the best options for your positions. I know it was home, but I don't think they'll be too disappointed with a one all start. But no, time waits for nobody, and they're off to West Adelaide Hellas uh, this coming weekend in uh, a former NSL outfit, as we knew, used to know them. So I wish the guys all the best there. Adelaide Croatia Vukovi also got their pre-season started. So the, uh, the old boys and uh, some, of the, some of the new boys got together, and uh, the reserves had a big 4-1 win, but unfortunately the first team went down 3-1. So uh, good luck in your preparations there, Vukovi. Okay. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. We're going to take a very, very short break with some words from our sponsors. Um, and when we return, it's part two of the Australian-Croatian scene. You're tuning in to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's episode six. We're back on the um the Oz Crow Soccer Show now. Before we go, Josip, I was talk, I, I I had a message from uh, Nicholas Kraljevic, who's behind the Plema app. Um, he's over the moon. A lot of Australian Croatians joining up the app. It's a great way to keep the um Croatian community together. We're we're not talking just Australia wide. We're talking around the world. And uh, yourself and myself, we're both on it. Um, it's good to see a lot more um a lot more a lot more activity happening in the in the community section of the app. Yeah, and uh, actually, time it's very timely, Tonch, because I just saw Johnny Cash, or Cash Johnny as he puts himself up in our <laughs> comments, he did this Titrava in Zabava on the 2nd of April uh, at Melbourne, Croatia. So there's a, a wonderful opportunity, Johnny. Get onto the Plema app, spread the news everywhere <laughs> possible. And everyone will come along and enjoy this Titrava and celebrations. Absolutely. That's coming up early April. Actually, Easter is a little bit later this year. Um, yep. I think Pepenica still hasn't happened yet. And the no, old, uh, uh, Tuesday. Come the Mashkare and the Fashniks yeah. and all of that, the great Croatian tradition. Any chance yep. to just get dressed up and why Why not? Everyone hey? also get ready for what you're going to give up, what you're going to do for yeah. the length. <laughs> maybe, maybe all the, you know, I mean, in the A-League, Josipe, a, a while, a, a couple of years ago, they had the Star Wars round, didn't they? Everything yeah. was Star Wars themed. Maybe yeah. maybe the Australian-Croatian club should have a Mashkare themed uh, round just before, you know, pe pe uh, Pepelnica or something like that. And everyone just rock up and dressed up yeah, in whatever. Could be onto it's something. In, it's big in Mexico. They, they, they love that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, mate. I'm back to Sorry. you. And let's go. Part two of the Australian-Croatian soccer scene. Let's go over the Nullarbor to Western Australia. Uh, unfortunately, our friends at Guelph Croatia continue their losing ways with a 3-0 loss to Sterling Macedonia and uh, now face Bayswater in the last round of the night series. Uh, it will need to quickly find itself some form ahead of the 22 campaign, uh, which is just around the corner. Uh, in news of their women's team, though, they are on the lookout for some state league players, and it's their image there on the screen. Reach out to Laura Denona. Laura's been a wonderful servant for Guelph Croatia and the Croatia community over the years. So, hi, Laura. I uh, hope you're doing well. If you're uh, looking for a, uh, a team to play, reach out to Guelph. We'll head over the road to Western Knights, uh, who had a, a forfeit in their, in their case, uh, with the night series. So they'll head off to the quarterfinals so this Friday um, at Crazy Domain Stadium, and they'll be taking on Forest Field United. So we wish them all the best, and hopefully they can go all the way. The quick mention there for their Bill and Orch coming up this weekend now. A um, lot of uh, activity around that. Good celebration and recognition and tribute to Hayduk Split. So get your tickets. Details there on the screen. Uh, it's always a wonderful affair. Don't miss it.
Now, I wonder if they're going to have a membership drive there, Josipe, on the night. Um, hey, look, Split have officially hit 50,000 members worldwide. That is an amazing, amazing achievement. Yeah, that really um, is. And I know some of the uh, some of the good folk involved with with um, Western Knights are very very passionate um, supporters of the Beerly. So I wonder if there will be a um, a membership drive happening on the night. Um, would love to hear more. And we will be hearing from Western Knights in in weeks yeah, to come as well. They're coming so, up soon. Yeah, so uh, I I'll can't be really wait. looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, that's another one I can't wait for. Um, yeah, yeah, moving now to the nation's capital. Nations Capital. Let's have a bit of focus on the women from the eight Nations Capital this this week. And uh, look at that photo there. Look at that. I, this is this lit up my day when I saw this photo. Mm -hmm. Canberra Croatia's under fourteens NPL team having a preseason hit out, and you just look at their faces and how delighted they are to be together and, and perform. But more importantly, how, how great are those kits? Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's a real I do good, love them. really yep. good customized job there by Legia. Well done. And uh, we'll um. We'll probably have a, a little bit of an announcement to make in regards to uh, merchandise and kids coming up shortly, uh, Tonch, but we won't put too much information on the table. No, no. We're going to cram that much information um, and that much news happening around our community. It's incredible. So, yeah, we'll just have to drip feed our, uh, our viewers. It's great to see a lot of people getting involved um, in the comments section. Brisbane Knights, gents, if you wouldn't mind mentioning a special announcement. We'll get to that, Brisbane Knights. We'll get to that. Hold on to your horses because that's coming up. But uh, before we do go oh, yeah. um, and talk we about Brisbane, let's go to New South Wales, hey. New South Wales. So um, we've got Hurstville had the Martin Knezhevich Cup. So Hurstville, who was on our show recently, uh, they had a heap of teams come out and enjoy the festivities and a few images that were shared over the internet during the week there just to see uh, some of the uh, the old and the new coming together, having a big picnic uh festival type day and the weather turned it on for them so it was great to see that too mm -hmm. um south coast united hosted newcastle there's some more images there of the knezhevich cup south coast united they hosted newcastle croatia in a uh, steel city cup um from all reports from our friend josh popiscu from newcastle uh, he was delighted with the efforts from the boy from boys from newcastle they've got a long way to go but um he's he's definitely happy with where that where they're going with their form um, and they head off to one of my favourite places in the world, Tonch, Nelson Bay. So Newcastle heads off to Nelson Bay for a practice. Now, session. where is that? Where is Nelson Bay? Port um, Stevens, exactly. mate. Ah, Port Stevens. so north of Sydney. Yep. Uh, yeah, north of Newcastle City, about 35 kilometres, uh, and it's just a marvellous place of the world. There's actually a bowls club there. You, if you drive too fast, you'll miss it. There's a Croatian got a, off, off the uh, steel um, barricade. You yep. look up and you see the big grub and Croatian bowl, so you just go in there and, yeah, roll one over. As that old song goes, Malo Nasi Al Nasima, we just seem to be everywhere. <laughs> and it's good to see. It's good to see. Um, yeah, moving along yeah, then. Um, let's, so get up up, up, let's go up to Queensland, Queensland hey? Yeah, all hey, righty. Speaking of Brisbane, Croatia, so uh, they had a mixed bag of results. Uh, unfortunately, knocked out of the Australia Cup by North Star 3-2. Under 23s against Uni Queensland, one all draw, and their women had a three all draw against Westside. And as mentioned by uh, the announcement there from Brisbane Knights a little bit earlier, they're having a special exhibition match uh, being played this Friday night, the Johnny Message Cup. So that's where um, not only will Gold Coast Knights, old boys, and, and Sunnyside come together, but there will be an exhibition match between the Brisbane Croatia young boys versus Sunnyside old boys. So just to make the uh, event more exciting and bring out more people in the community to come have a bit of fun um, and watch a bit of football. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Just down the just, road or just down the – is it the Pacific Highway? Is that what they call it? Coming, um, into my, coming into my garage yeah. now, mate. Coming into yeah. my garage. <laughs> <laughs> We're nearly there. We're nearly home, nearly huh? Nearly oh, home, okay. yeah. Gold Coast Knights uh, had a 2-1 loss against Queensland Lions in their uh, pre-season cup there. Um, it, was a, it was a tight affair for most of the game, but I think the, the sapping conditions really took it out of the players and Lions just had a little bit more in the tank in the end. Um, but this weekend is round one of MPL and they take on Logan. And Logan, his co uh, assistant coach, is James Coots, who used to coach North Geelong for oh, a couple right. of years there, mate. Yep, so, yep. So we'll, we'll, I'll be catching up with a whole bunch of people on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> a, li a little, a little bit of a uh, what would you call it? A little bit of a um, uh, uh, a reunion there happening reunion. in Queensland. Yeah. And, one uh, last and mention. One last mention. This yeah. this this got made my heart melt. Um, young player at Knights, Gold Coast Knights. Young Rome, under ten player. 
Look at that fearless look in his eye. You know, balanced play over the ball. Unfortunately, broke his arm. So, Rome, oh. if your if your family or someone from the one of your coaches might be watching this or getting this, all the best in your recovery, brave knight. You'll be back stronger and better than ever. Okay, mate. Yeah. Awesome. Good luck to good luck to the youngster there. Now, um, just to top it off, we've got so much news going on. News from the Sarvis as well. Um, just during the week, the um, C Croatian Soccer Association of Australia Tawny app. Um, is proudly brought to you by Sentia Australia, and that is going to be out very, very shortly, folks. So keep an eye out on that. Um, the the Savis app, app uh, King Tom this year going to be huge, going to be massive, no doubt. Um, so um, yeah, that is something. Some news coming out of the Savis itself, as we affectionately Speaking refer of to King it. Tom in those in those photos at the Knezhevich Cup. Good to see the King Tom old boys out. They're always ever present, and uh, special call out to Vinkle there. Yeah. Folks, uh, it's the Oz Crow Soccer Show, Episode 6, proudly support, su supported and sponsored by St. Albans Dinamore Soccer Club. As you heard um, just moments earlier, next week, a big show thanks to Oz Crow Imports. We will be covering, um, featuring um, Strathmore Split. Um, a lot, a lot happening. Now, don't go away. Some more news from our sponsors. When we return, if you thought a lot's happening here, well, uh, even a lot more is happening in the uh, Domovina, so we'll be going on very, very quickly about some of the things, issues facing the game, and boy, isn't the HNL just getting better and better and better. Don't go away, folks. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show episode. I love those designs. I love them. I was, you took the words out of my mouth, mate. Six weeks now, we've already got a telepathic um, um, <laughs> uh, connection start to happen. Exactly what I was going to say. You, you first. You first. I, the, I don't, oh, I wanna, <laughs> seriously, if I wasn't really building a house, I'd say, scrap it. I'm going, I'm going with Robbie. I'm going to have to do this again. Yeah, They're unreal. Sorry. They're inspiring. Uh, yeah, it is. It is really good. Robbie Slavicek in Perth. He can do all your architectural needs, drafting and what you're not, all the way from over there in WA. They are an isolated lot over there, but we're, we're in the 21st century, so we've got the power of the internet and what you're not. Um, mate, We um, Maxi Santich made a little comment in the um, comment section. Good old Maxi. We'll pick um, up, yeah. Post Coach of the uh, Gorspich Bears, heavily involved with St. Albans Dinamo Women's in the past. And which, uh, he said um, uh, the, the Hayduk split versus Rijeka game for this weekend is a sellout. Mate, we've got a few more sellouts. Dare I say your team coming up against Dinamo Zagreb on, on the wee hours of Monday morning, I think that is headed for a sellout. Now, remember, in Croatia at the moment, it's 40% capacity. Um, yeah. but, but how good is that that all these... Um, just games or grounds, blockbusters. But now, now we've also got another one that's a sellout, and that's this is you know I'm not I'm not a, I'll, I'll be honest I'm not a Dinamo Zagreb fan, but when they play in Europe, boy, am I a fan. Um, Rasprodane Ulaznice. For those of you that don't understand Croatian, it means sold out tickets. So this out, Friday yeah. morning's game against Sevilla, the big one, um, at Maximir Stadium. Um, all available tickets pretty much have been sold out. So Dinamo Zagreb will have a, a you know, I think it's 10, 11,000 or whatever it is, um, fans supporting them um, at the Maximir. Um, go and Dinamo. That will be the most hostile, unwelcoming environment for Sevilla. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, good, good luck to Sevilla. Yeah. Hope, uh, uh, I hope you can come out unscathed, but I, I, I'm tipping that Dinamo will roll them. I reckon, I reckon, Mislav Orsic, I reckon he's going to create um, history. You know, he's done it before against, what, Tottenham? Remember hat-trick against yeah. Tottenham? 
Yeah. Uh, Petkovic is in a little bit of a form slump, but mate, you know, he's a Metkov Chan. Never put him the mercurial, you never put a Metkov Chan down when you least expect that he's going to turn around and uh, he'll, he'll create something incredible. Um, mate, uh, now the big news in Croatia TV rights, Josipe. Um, well, well, oh, well, 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 the big news is that after a, uh, after a bit of an absence, the um, HNL will now be returning to um to to the screens of the HRT channel the yep. Hrvatski uh, Radio Televizija I suppose um that's that's big news now look they don't know because there's a consortium involved I guess pretty much like over here they're talking one game a week will be on HTV uh, or HRT um and then there's going to be others on uh, specially produced TV channels like Max TV which is I, th- I suppose their version of um um Foxtel or, or thereabouts yeah um but it it just goes to show that bit by bit the um the Croatian league is becoming a lot lot more attractive and look um it means that a lot of the clubs that you know the lower lower ranked clubs will get some sort of a dividend I suppose which um you know well, look Punch, you, you got to consider be. the fact that Dynamo Dynamo's game on Friday it doesn't just matter for them it matters yeah. for the two teams the sit the teams that sit in second and third too and getting a more direct route through Europe as well. You get more direct route to Europe, you get more uh-huh. revenue, right? So it, one one hand starts to feed the other, and and that's that's how, how this game works in terms of this end this end of the stick. These these television rights, yes, they'll be forty four million, but they're also looking at how the Croatian teams are performing and how they're going to make a, their place in Europe as well and, and regenerate that revenue too. Yeah, I, I read a really good article where they said that uh, the the HN TV channel is going to be uh, wound up. But part of this agreement, part of this agreement is that it won't be just the first division, which next year will be called the the Elite Na Liga, um, but the, also the second division and the um, third division. There will be games covered as well. Um, and look, I, I absolutely love watching the grassroots. I, I love watching some of the lower league teams, and we'll get to know a lot more of what is happening in, in some of those um, second and third division clubs. And in fact, we're going to get a bit of an inside um, insight, if you like. With what is happening with one of those clubs, Enka Rudesh, because um, yeah. our, our our guest on our show tonight, Marko Bulic, actually has um, been over there and has trained with Enka Rudesh, and uh, Rude, Rudesh actually has a fairly strong Australian Croatian connection. Josip, um, the two sons of of Melbourne Victory coach Tony Popovic, uh, uh, yep. Christian and is it Gabriel? Gabriel, Gabriel yeah. Yeah. They are currently over there. So um, yeah. yeah, look, yeah, it's going to be um, interesting what happens over the next say six to 12 months and also um there we go quick look at the um the the the, the uh, results there mate who would have guessed that bottom one dinamo zagreb against its so-called filiala oh look we, we knew it was going to be a tight one. affair nil, nil. Well, it, we knew it was going to be a tight affair but my question to you is tonchi and this is a little tongue-in-cheek but I, it, it also comes to comes to light yeah. over the years i've watched the commentary and banter between hayduk and dinamo supporters now you know i'm neither right yeah, yeah, but yeah, when, whenever Dinamo gets this many penalties in the space of three weeks, everyone's talking about it's been rigged, it's a marmage thing. Hayduk's had five penalties in three weeks. What's going True. on? True. Have they deserved it though? I mean, when you when you get know. first to the ball, when you push yourself and you, I, I don't, don't know. know. Well, well, let's ask. Them. I'm just, let's saying, ask I'm just saying. I've seen comments between yeah people with your surname and people with a Yurich surname. Over the internet, <laughs> arguing. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see if that 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 Yurich that we talk about is <laughs> if, if he's going to uh, if he's going to Yavitz there um, and what he thinks. But more to the point, what do the viewers out there? We've got a very very good um healthy uh, viewer numbers uh, number healthy healthy number of viewers tuning in. The Marco Levaya there, twenty one goals. Now this is interesting because there was an article in the Croatian press during the week where it said, I think Levaya's got eight or nine of those goals have, have been penalties. Um, and they're saying prior to that, um, Hajduk lost so many points and, and they lost a, a position in Europe. They also um, conceded, I think, a game, uh, one of the European qualifiers. I can't remember which one it was. might have been against that Maltese club that they eventually lost because they'd missed penalties. And I, got, I guess... It, expl- it shows you just how important it is when you get when you're faced with the penalty. Uh, you know, you you need to. <laughs> we've we've seen it time and time again, haven't we? Um, you know, at the World Cup, we've seen the Socceroos as well. Um, you know, having a very good penalty taker at the end of the day. And look, yeah, Livaya. Well, 
you know, out of 21 goals, what, eight, nine are penalties? If someone can correct me. Um, but he's still shooting at the top of the um, goal scorers charts. But yep. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, there, there's a lot of controversy. There was a controversy in the in the Osiek Istra game as well. They're saying Osiek got the third winning goal, the match winning goal, even though the player was offside. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't look. Anything that's going to make that league um, exciting, I'm all for it. <laughs> look, it's uh, and, and it's just going to get more exciting as the as the as the final stanza comes closer. Uh, with yeah. Dynamo, you know, holding off to, on a one point lead. Yes, they got a they got a game in hand. Uh, but that match against Osiek coming up, it's going to be an absolute belter, right? Yeah. And, and then remember, it's got to come on on the back of the, the, the Sevilla game. So, Josip, yep. what do you think? Will, will that, will that, um, is Serpit Dinamo, will that take all the um, focus away they from need, the game against Osiek? I, I think they need to put all the eggs in the basket for UEFA. Um, yeah. Knowing that, you know, They've got a little bit of a buffer here that they can muck around with and maybe play a little bit conservatively and try and protect this uh, lead at the top of the ladder. Yeah. But, um, um, look, 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 let's go to some of those fixtures this weekend. Um, Slavin Belopo, Hrvatski Dragovoljac, or some are calling him Riečki Dragovoljac. <laughs> Lokomotiva taking on Gorica, wee hours of Sunday morning. Then the big one, Hajduk split Rijeka. At the Poljud, um, if we didn't have the uh, COVID restrictions, this would be an absolute sellout. But nonetheless, there'll be 14,000 um, mad splitchani, mad um, going yeah. for 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 this game. And, and this has become a real grudge match between these two clubs in recent years. Um, they don't like each other. The fans don't like each other. The clubs themselves don't like each other. Um, but, you know, hopefully the game it will be played out on the field, not not anywhere else. That's, that's what Rover is about. That's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Shibeni Canistra, yeah. um, interesting, interesting um, um, game that will be there, even though both these teams are sort of quite lowly. But um, Istra have actually been having a pretty good season. They've, they've really, they've beaten Dinamo once. They've, they've taken it up yeah. to Dinamo take that up to Osiek. That so look, there there is that sometimes surprises. They could they could knock Shibnik down towards the relegation spot, mate. So yeah, it, it but, could go either way. Yeah, but the big one, the big one, Osiek versus Dinamo at four o'clock Monday morning mm. with Kiki Lovrich, Mio Taktash firing on all cylinders um, uh, um, with the blue and whites. Uh, Neno yep. Belia, oh, my, um, uh, Bielica has got a really, I was about to say Neno Belian, the uh, singer. It can't be him. Uh, Neno Bielica, he's really got a very serious team. And I think what's more, what, what, what is more important is that now clubs like Osiek and maybe to a lesser extent Rijeka, not only do they, you know, when they come up against Dinam or come up, get up against Hajduk, have that mentality of, you know, we can match these guys. They've actually got a mentality of we can beat these guys, especially yep. at home. That's right. Yeah. And that's uh, once you got in, into that mindset, uh, everything's everything's possible. Yeah. Exciting times for Orsiek. They're going to have a new stadium uh, midway through the year. They picked up some unbelievably good players. And there's every chance, every chance that they could um, take one or two of the trophies this year, either the league title or the cup title. Uh, yeah. Let's turn our quick attention quickly to the uh, Druga Liga. <laughs> now, this is look the the tablets are there. The table there um, has a really good, um, I guess, format. It shows the bottom five that will get relegated. Um, so there's a lot, lot, lot going on in um, the Druga Liga. A lot of restructuring happening. Um, yep. The only the top team automatically gets through. In fact, there are no playoffs this year. Um, it's just the top team gets through. So look how close that is. I mean, what is it? Six points separate the top five teams. Yeah, um, right. Very close. And there's always a little bit of a kind of Rudesh is there. Um, Orient was there a week ago. Baraj didn't seem to be doing really, really well. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on the limb and say Baraj didn't. Actually, have you been to Baraj Yossi? No, I didn't get that far when I went last beautiful, time. Beautiful. I would say one of the most beautiful little towns or, 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 or um, cities, I guess, in Croatia. Um, and they've got just a, a phenomenal little um, um, club there. In fact, they've got two clubs, Varaždin and then the Vartex uh, Varaždin, which is the uh, yeah. club form from the spin-off, well, basically a supporters club. There was a yeah. bit of a schism there a few years back, but um, they're now in the Trecha Liga, the um, Vartex and Varaždin are in the Druga Liga, so... A real football town that one is, that's for sure. Yeah, no, and just noticing here, uh, in the just below that top five, the Dugapolya, 
Um, that's that's where uh, where young Lucas Scorco has uh, found himself a gig. But yes, um, in that same lineup, and I, when I had a look at the team lineups for the last match against Sesto out there, which Dugu Polya won two one, uh, there's a Luca Viduka that plays. Yes, Polya, but is apparently no relation to no our, relation to the our, our, to the great B bomber. bomber. Yeah, you know, there is uh, probably from the Zadarsko Zalege. Now, Rudish has got two Croatian, um, Australian Croatians, the Popovic brothers, but Orient as well has got um, uh, young Nikola Jadric from uh, Canberra as well. So yep. a really strong Australian Croatian flavour. And we'll be talking a little bit later on to Marko Bulic, uh, Melbourne Vic Victory um, uh, NPL 3 team goalkeeper. He's had an opportunity to go um, to, um, uh, uh, to, to, to Croatia. Yep. He's seen it for himself, so it'll be really interesting to see just um yeah just just how what what the mood is over there like with regards to opportunities for Croatian um, exactly. Croatian players. Yeah. It'll be look I'm 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 going to be interested in that. That's coming a late little later on. Uh, fixtures. Let's quickly go through this, and then we're going to have to get to our guests. Yep. So we've got Sesveta taking on Dubrava, which is uh, probably a little bit of a, an a, even match there. But the one to probably look out for is to see if Tsibalia can try and lift and, and give Rudesh a bit of a, a push there, as well as Yarun against uh, Orient. And that might then start to make that top five squeeze into maybe a top squeeze, top six squeeze, as uh, Osiek take on um, Dugopoya takes on Osiek two, and we know that Osiek two is down towards the bottom near that relegation spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so it's a really, really good, good interesting, interesting game. Happening there, there. Um, um, and, and then we must, must mention, mention as well the the, 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 the um, head 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 out there, or the, or the, or the followers of the head of Bosnia clubs. clubs. Um, and and there, there are three in the B Cup, Liga, Zrinski, Shirok, Bieg, and Posušje. All the action resumes this weekend. Um, um, I haven't got, got the res uh, I haven't, haven't got the fixtures, fixtures right, right on, on me, your system. System. I'm not sure if you, if you, you do, but uh, Zidinski at, at the moment, moment hold, hold a 12 point gap at the top of the competition standings um, over Tuzla City. Uh, Borat's Banya Luka are in third spot, Sarajevo in fourth, and then our own Shiroki Bireg are fifth. Um, Potushe are fighting kind of against relegation, they are the, I guess the newly promoted because they've uh, this is their first year back in the top flight. Uh, well, yeah. Postoche has taken on bottom of the ladder, Radnik. So there's a chance for them to start getting some points uh, from the restart. Sh Shiruki takes on Borat. So uh, there's an, another opportunity for them to uh, try and push them further away from trying to climb up the ladder. But they, you know, with a bit of a buffer on their hands, they're probably you know looking looking the likely goods to take out the title. But for Shiruki, Shiruki to jump up into that. Uh, uh, danger spot and try and look for a, a chance to go into Europe. Um, they have got uh, no, sorry, Shiruk has got Borat and uh, Zrinski has Rudar. I beg your pardon, I've, I've mixed it up the wrong way around. So, Shiruk is got a chance to have a crack at Borat and then Zrinski's taken on lowly Rudar. A lot, a lot happening there, there, ladies and gentlemen, in the Croatian scene, scene in, in the um, Croatian football scene. scene. So, um, we're, we're now, now going, going to, uh, uh, well, well we're going to actually, um, I think, mate, we, we might just take a little bit of a breather. There's so much going on. We'll take a little bit of a breather. When we return, um, we will then catch up with our club in focus for tonight. It's St. Albans Dynamo. Um, a lot to talk about there. Lots of, lots of exciting things on the horizon for Dynamo. So, um, folks, you're tuning in to the Ozcrow Soccer Show, Episode 6. Do not go away. Sport requires effort, sweat and strong will, and Macron knows it. A leading global company with Italian DNA in the production and sale of sportswear, when Macron first entered the sports world in 1971, he was a small yet strong player. Since then, Macron has been growing at a very fast pace, supporting teams, sportsmen and women at all levels, working hard to supply them with the best technical products to help improve their performances. With over 4 million pieces of stock available in our Italian warehouse, including an extensive range of on-field, off-field and free-time products, we cater for everyone from amateurs to professional sporting organisations. Ranked third most prominent football brand by UEFA, Macron keeps expanding its presence worldwide and now even includes Croatian giants Hajduk Split, Hainel Prva Liga outfit MK Šibenik, as well as Melbourne-based Croatian community club NK Bunker, amongst its ever-growing international family. And there are more to come. 
Work hard, play harder, Macron, your next teamwear partner. For more information, visit our website at www.macronvic.com.au or call us now on 1-800-MACRON. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Thank you very much to all of our advertisers, all of our sponsors, Slavicek Studio Architecture, um, the Plemet app, and indeed Macron Victoria. A very big thank. If you are interested and are keen to um, to advertise your business and help support what we're trying to create, um, send us an email, um, Show at gmail.com. You can private message us at this Facebook page or contact Yosip or myself um, and we will gladly point you in the right direction. Mate, it's time now for our club in focus, Josipe, and um, we're going to have to bring on um, our first guest. He's the uh, actually another Donio Neret um, and um, he's the president down there, uh, first year president of the seniors. He's been the president, I think, for the last five years or something like that. Um, it's a big, big welcome. Oscar, welcome to uh, all the way from the Vukovar Bar. It's uh, Ilya Dragicic. How are you, Ilya? Hey guys, how are you? Hi, Jets. Good. And right next to you, right on your left hand side, we've got Michael Gurgic. Michael, how are you? Yeah, good. How are you, boys? Very good, very good. Good to see um, you. Yeah. Ilya, first of all, over to you, mate. Um, well, a good start last week on the field as far as that is concerned. Um, how, how did you see round one through the eyes of the Gospodin Predsednik? Look, we, we're really excited about getting that result because we've been support Melbourne in the last four or five years and haven't managed to get a result and actually got whacked a couple of times. Yeah. So we're, we're really excited about getting that one point and then leading into this week and hopefully backing it up. Yeah. Yossip? Good stuff. Ilya, um, well done on the, on the job that you're doing so far with the presidency at the club. Uh, how are you faring for sleep? Um, look, to be honest, I, I really didn't think it was you know, going to be as big as it is. But in saying that, um, being around the club and being part of the juniors set up and the president of the juniors um, sort of set me up maybe to do this one day. I didn't really think it was going to happen so soon. But in saying that, look, being a parent, you know, you guys know what it's like to be at a soccer club. You've got one kid playing, you've got another kid playing. You're, you're already here anyway, so it's just a matter of um, yeah. making some decisions with a, a couple of other people and a group of other committee members. That, um, in, in our case, this year we've managed to join the junior committee and the senior committee as one working committee, um, meaning that we've got a lot of hands on when we need to do and stage events and carry, you know, carry out dinners and work around the ground and, and just prep things for the club. Uh, we could turn to a lot, a lot of different people, which has made a big, big difference. That's fantastic. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a delight to hear that because, you know, yeah. we, we all know it, the difficulties that arise from trying to run a, a, a community club and also trying to make some pathways there, which we'll touch on as we, as we discuss a bit further. So congratulations for stepping up. Cheers. Now, Ilya, um, there are a club like Dinamo is... is, is it has got so many different facets to it. You mentioned the, the juniors. Now you've been you've been president of the juniors committee. Was it for five years or no, so? No, I was in the committee for four years. Four years. Yep. The last couple as president. Yeah. Um, and and look, yeah, so apart, a, sorry, go on. That was a changing role. You know, we were evolving within ourselves to take over the reins as president from another president. That president will become something else. The other committee member will become vice president. So we're just rotating that role and giving people, let's say, a break and not wearing them out over, you know, consecutive years. Awesome. I, I wanted to touch base on that because um, that's one of the things these days we, um, you know, um, we, we hear a lot. People come on the committee or they're too scared to come on, on a committee because they're, they're scared of being burnt out or they're scared of being um, um, everything falls upon them. And we often see um, clubs struggling to get a president. Um, for that particular role, everyone sort of seems to think that all the responsibility has to fall on the on the shoulders of one person. How do, you've you've just sort of touched on it there. How have you gone a bit about structuring or restructuring the club to get as many hands on deck involved? Because talk to us about Dinamo. There's so many different 
aspects of the club, isn't there? Well, this year also we've sort of changed other parts of the club. We have an executive committee, which is a couple of, uh, you know, three or four people on that committee who will oversee the senior committee and oversee the junior committee. Um, and we just felt that getting these people to look at us from the outside, inside, and give us some feedback. So if it looks like, you know, we're, we're not doing something right or we are doing something right, they can tell us to carry on. And if we're not doing something right, they can actually pull us up and say, listen, you probably need to look at this um, and, and, you know, look at how we can go forward. So that we've changed that side of the club. Uh, bringing the two committees together, that's another big change um, and a really good direction that's been very positive over the last three or four months. Um, we can host bigger events and we've showed that with our junior NPLs and our um, events that we've had before Christmas and now only last week. Um, we carry them out really, really well because we've got the manpower to, to stage it. Um, and look, and, and we've got other changes that we want to implement, that we want to look at and that we want to move forward with. It's just you can't do too much at once. We've got to settle in as a committee um, yep. and get a feel for it and then we'll make some more changes if we need to. Well, that, that, that's uh, a, a nice long-term uh, outlook, outlook too there. And it sort of ties in with your with your club and the way it's been going with your junior development too. From the outside looking in, there's there's a distinct growth and and pattern with the juniors in terms of the way they play, what you can expect from us from team one to team two to team three as you see them through the day. There, there, there's now a characteristic that you can see that's identifiable. Um, do you feel like what you've done in the back room is starting to apply itself on the field as well? Definitely, um, and and that was. That was the purpose of us coming in and, and trying to make a difference. We we got a whole heap of soccer people together to make those decisions to change the direction, um, and we felt like we, you know, had to had to upset a couple. But the big the big picture is that we've moved forward, and we have gone from a eight to ten position junior team to a you know one to five now. Um, consistently over our age groups from 14 to 18. Now, you know, that's taken time. And, and then we've seen our mini roos develop and get better. Um, and and in, in total, we have, we're really excited about the young kids that are coming through and the opportunities that we want to give them to get to the senior pitch. Michael, I want to ask you um, from a player's point of view, um, how, how, how are you seeing the changes at Inamore? from the grassroots all the way up to the senior level. And, um, and are the senior players involved in, in, in much of what, he, what goes on for juniors, you know, you know taking clinics or, or coaching or any of that sort of stuff? Um, yeah, it's, it's changed uh, a bit. So coming up, <coughs> sort of, I think our juniors weren't as good as they are now. Like Ilya and a few other people have come on board and they've made our juniors set up like a hell of a lot better. And it proof is in the pudding that we had about five or six people step up into our senior squad and have come through the ranks. So and hopefully more in the future. Yeah. So and there has been a few people that have stepped in and run a few sessions. Yossi Konya, when he was here, he would step in and he would run a few clinics and that. And a few of the other boys help out when they can. And we try and make it around to grounds, whether that be watch trainings or watch games. You know, because we like seeing it too as players. So, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, go on. Go on, I was say, Gr Grigor, your entire family uh, is in enveloped in, in St Albans, right? Your, your sister's involvement, your parents are, uh, are, are stalwarts there. Like a visit to St Albans isn't complete unless I see see Marie and Steve on the on the sidelines, right? Now you you spent a lot of time there and, and seeing the changes. Um, what what for you in probably in the last five years out of any anything like if you to put your finger on something that you feel like is the biggest significant change, what would you say this? Oh, the biggest significant change, I think, would be just everyone's involvement more. If Yeah, just everyone's, like, there have been a lot more people that have been a lot more involved and helped out. Wonderful, yeah. Whereas in before, there would probably be, you know, just one or two people that were, like, taken down. Like, all those little things that add up. So there's been, yeah, a whole lot of more people that have been involved and, yeah, been good, so... Ily, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the um, uh, the academy, academy, the Dinamo Academy. 
um, how, how that was, how the idea, how the concept of that came about, how that's being run. And is it, is it done more to, to, to provide even a, a higher elite pathway for some of the talented players? Or is it something that's just kind of open to all of those kids that they want to take their, you know, their, their, their football, their junior football to another level? Look, I, I think it's, it's got a, a, lot of, a lot of points um, that we need to ch touch on. There's, there's one really important point, and that's we, we as a soccer community or soccer people of this club believe that kids need to play and play and play and play, okay? Bringing your kid to training as a mini roof for two nights a week just doesn't do it, okay? So we decided uh, on the back of that, you know, kids have got other activities. Parents are worn out or, or tired at work and stuff. But on a Saturday morning, we said, all right, let's give these kids and these parents an opportunity to do another training session, to get some more touches. Um, look, the, the, the equation of a, of a young boy developing his game is to play as many games as possible. We're talking about, you know, up to 60 or 70 games a year. Now, how do you do that? You, you've got to be active as a club. You've got to be active as a coach. And this is where a lot of credit goes to our coaches who drive their kids, who drive their parents, probably drive their parents crazy with the amount of training and the amount of, uh, you know, tournaments that they play and games <laughs> that they play. But we believe in that. We believe in that structure. And we believe that's what's required to give this kid an opportunity and a really good base, technical base. And then, you know, the physical base is later once they hit their 14s, 15s and 16s. But as young soccer players, they need to touch, kick that ball as much as possible. You know what, Ilya? Spot on, 100% spot on. And to those parents who are maybe a little bit tired and, and looking for some respite, no better place than the Vukovar bar right there behind you, mate. Tell us more about that. That just got recently renovated, didn't it? Well, uh, not not Mike renovated. Was away but smiles. It was sort of <laughs> inactive over the last couple of years because of COVID. Um, so the way it came about was a, just a, a normal St Albans night out, you know, with a few boys around the table. Who someone a quiet one, quiet, yeah, yeah, no, definitely course. quiet. And then it, you know the suggestion came up that we should look at renaming the bar because it was named the Yuta Shabbat, but. A couple of guys said, no, we could do better than that. So we started with um, probably three or four different names, but we found that Vukovar being uh, very significant to the Croatian community um, was probably going to be a really good one for our club too that we could, um, you know, join, join banners with. You could see the Vukovar logo uh, with the soldiers and then it, obviously our Dinamo yeah. logo. Um, and then the crest in the middle with the two hands. Uh, we, we, well, it's... Really, really, and to, to let everyone know, this bar now has generated somewhere near sixty, seventy thousand dollars for our club. Wow! Um, in in perspective, we do not spend that money on anything but improving the club, and that means you know within the facilities, if we need to get new chairs, which we're hopefully getting new chairs and tables soon, yeah, go to that. If we need to do works around the ground, that money yeah. is there. For that reason. Now we know, and, and we know why the Vukovar Bar has raised X amount of dollars for the club. It's because of um, supporters like this. Now, this <laughs> this is a photo of, um, of is this pretty much the committee of St. Albans? Um, isn't it the Men of All Seasons calendar? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like, this was last week be, um, before the Dandenong and the Melbourne Knights game, correct? Is it when. Why is, when, why is Bilosh when, tensing? <laughs> He's a natural. <laughs> now that uh, they're all jokes aside, that's that's really, really. I mean, um, Dinamo have always been renowned as um, being a very, very focal part of the community, the Croatian community, the Western suburbs. But you know, getting a group of um of, of the guys together and and going to Dandenong City to support the um, fellow Croatian clubs, that's that's certainly very, very. It's it's, it's certainly worthy of um. A great round of applause, but um, that's absolutely fantastic. But like, you can just see the guys smiling—a real camaraderie, mate. I haven't seen that sort of camaraderie since the old Knights Army days back in the NSL. Um, tell us more about the trip, uh, Ilya. Well, look, it, it being the first game of the year, um, and two Croatian clubs, and we support both clubs, and we yeah. said, Let, let's go down, let's go down to um, the game and support, you know, 
Dandy because they, they hosted a, a dinner beforehand and stuff like that, which yeah. we really wanted to be a part of. I mean, we all wanted to watch the game too. Uh, and the rest was, you know, up to everyone else to get around and uh, make themselves, I guess, the hospitable. Let's talk so, about um, this week's game, the Croatian derby. It's a segue into this week's game. Um, let's talk about that, and then we'll talk about some exciting plans that Dinamo has in the pipeline. But talk about talk to us, Ilya, about this week's game, and then we'll also hear from Michael from a player's perspective. Well, look, it's, it's a big day for us hosting uh, Dandy City. Uh, we, we also host um, our old football legend, Mick Chulina, who's been a big part of our club over many, many years, um, and we welcome him back. Um, so there's a lot of things. We've got our sponsors lunch on, so we're hosting almost 100 people for lunch um, on Sunday. We've got, expecting a really good turnout in crowd-wise, um, and I think the weather's going to be just right for it. Um, and on top of that, we, we're really excited about where our senior team's at, and Look, we uh, set out to help Crooney get, you know, get a really strong team together, squad, um, with encouraging him to, you know, promote the young young kids up, and he's done that. He's shown that uh, our preseason games have been good. Our opening opening game against Port was good, so we really want him to carry that on uh, this weekend, and hopefully the team gets the result. Yeah, very good, um, Michael. From your from your perspective, uh, now you've had the the round one and you've um, got yourself a, a point on the board. I watched the game; it was a quite a quite a resolute performance from Dynamo. There were times there where I thought Port were really coming hard at you, but there were also times where you had your own opportunities. After seeing the performance, I guess you have uh, of what what encountered between Knights and Dandy. How do you see the team's performance stepping up to the plate? Where do you think you can win the game? I think um, with our structure, the way we shaped up against Port Melbourne, we had a game plan, we stuck to it, we tried to nick it where we thought we could, we had opportunities and it just didn't go our way. We'll take the point, we we're encouraged by the point, but obviously versing Dandy coming off a, a big defeat, so they're going to bounce back, they're going to come at us hard and we have to be ready. Training's been hard already this week, so we're putting yeah. in the hard yards, we're not resting on our laurels at all, so yeah, we should Want to get to the next week and yeah it's a big pro derby so looking forward to it yep and how's your body holding up yeah you had the injury the previous year mate and you, you're coming back you're looking really fit and you're moving around moving around well so how's the body holding up yeah it's good i had a couple of years off one from COVID, one from an acl so worked hard with a couple of guys to get back and thankful that crew gave me an opportunity to come back and hopefully i'm repaying the faith a little bit and um yeah just Working hard, but the body's holding up well. So, round one, you feel a little bit of niggles on that, but no, other than that, feeling good. De definitely some changes in the uh, personnel and also some some players staying on. Um, have you found the new guys gelling quickly? Yeah, we did. Yeah, they, the new guys, like they, Karuni always picks someone that suits a team, not so, like they've got to be a good player and a good person. So, the guys that have come in, they fit in perfectly. So, from the start, we had a weekend away in Geelong too. So it was a good chance for us to just bond over a couple of drinks because you need that as a team. You need that away from the field because you can't just be on the field all the time. You need that sort of to the side. So it was good to get away and have that as well. So Yeah. Oh, who, who's that in the background? Yeah, Part-time barman. Uh -huh. Is that Martin? No, it's not. It's uh, Yutusha. Oh, Yutusha. Oh, OK. No. <laughs> good say good to the boys. Um, okay, so we, we got ourselves a, a bit of a blockbuster happening. You, you're expecting big numbers. Ilya, tell me, promise me you got the Wednesday nights working at the gate. Well, look, I think we're going to need everyone <laughs> working this weekend in some capacity. Um, the Book of Art boys always help out. They're always a great help for our club. Uh, Wednesday nights do their bit also. They're, they're fantastic. And Gorsbich, uh, they, they actually pull their weight also. But uh, most of the guys are really available when we need them um, and we do a roster uh, to move them around and whoever's available and stuff yeah. like that so we'll uh, it works well guys. works well i've seen it in practice mate it works well uh look before we before we uh head off uh and to our uh guests for the night we'd like to get a bit of an understanding about the big plans you got underway for some redevelopment there at churchill reserve 
we know that uh, everyone's been looking at uh, plans and designs over the years. You uh, look like you've got a good uh, master plan in place now. Give us a bit of a quick walkthrough about the sort of lo longevity of this project and what you want to achieve from, from stages one through to you know three or four. Look, th this is this is really early on. These are concepts um, that we're trying to work with with uh, different people involved. Uh, we've got a we've got a, a special four man committee who are driving this from a design concept to to a point where uh, you know we'll go for funding to local council, state government um and, and look this might take five ten years we, you know but we've got to put yep. something in place because right now we are struggling with changing rooms we are struggling you know and we do need more changing rooms we, we got a lot of women girls playing the sport at our club um and, and they need facilities so we we recognize yep. that and we need you know to help them get these facilities so we can grow that part of our club like I say, these, these are early on, but they're good for people to see because we are working in the background on this and it will take some time. But um, without without a plan, you've got nothing and we've got a plan. So we hope, you know, we, we've got something to work to. Mate, the you. timing couldn't be any better. We've got two elections coming up this year, state and federal. It's time to get those pollies promising some money our way, huh? Load up, mate, load up. Yeah. All right, uh, Michael. Um, uh, one last question to you. Um, with with um, you know, a lot of new players coming into the change room, um, into the dressing room. A lot of signings. Um, um, how have they adapted to the Dinamo way, the Dinamo culture? Um, I mean, uh, you know, just in, just in the dressing room, um, so to speak. And um, seriously, honestly, where do you think the team will fi will will finish after what we've seen um, in round one? Oh, well, the boys have fit into the Dynamo way, like Shay, from the start. They, we've got a good culture here. We've took a, taken a while to build it up, and the way we brought it up, when the new player comes in, they just into the system straight away, and they fit in. So, yeah, it's been good like that. And insofar as we will finish, I'll tell you in September, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well answered. Well there we go. That was the um, that was the team that that took the um, lineup last week against Port Melbourne, Brown, El Arabi, Dib, Jurkovic, Hodor, Baricevic, Monek, Razumic, yourself, um, Michael Dejic, and Guy, and then the substitutes: Murray, Zwed, Naranja, Guarini, Miranda, Brzoja, and Lejeune. Do they all speak English, um, Michael, or, or, or does uh, Kruni have to start um, uh, using um, the, an interpreter in the uh, in like the, the Olympics? Dangerous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, only, only Breno, the new guy from Peru, is a bit with his English, but he's pretty good. So, yeah, no, yeah. none are required. <laughs> He'll learn the important words really quick, don't worry. Yeah, he will. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, oh, we, we can't say them on air here, of course. But, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, who was it uh, a few weeks ago when we had uh, Mitch, Mitch Nichols from Gold Coast Knights? Um, and you yeah. were saying, and, and Scotty McDonald, you know, they were learning the most important words, and it was usually the swear words, wasn't it? Yeah, but, uh, yeah you, got about, you got them sorted. Yeah. Gents, um, thank you very much for joining us. Ilya, one last word, uh, uh, one last opportunity for you to talk to the uh, Dinamo faithful and indeed the Croatian community of Melbourne with regards to Sunday's match. Over to you. Look, uh, we encourage as many people to come down. Uh, we expect a great turnout. We'll have the, our bar work and our kitchen work and there'll be plenty of food and drink for everyone. Uh, and come and support the team. That are you know started off really well, and we hope they can continue that. Um, and to the guys, you know, all over Australia, friends in Western Australia, Adelaide, Sydney, and Canberra, um, tune in on on the uh, YouTube, watch the game, and uh, support us from afar. Well done, guys.
Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. If you've just tuned into us now, you've missed the club in focus, St. Albans Dynamo. We had uh, Ilya Dragicic, the president there, Josip, and we also had uh, Captain Courageous Michael Grgic, the goal scorer of the um, first goal in, um, uh, last week. Awesome to have both of those guys on. Um, mate, now it's I, I did. Uh, I didn't want to say this to Ilya and Michael, but Ilya came to North Geelong and ended his career. Michael came to North Geelong and he's propelled his career. <laughs> Started his career. I like that little <laughs> comparison. I like that comparison. Um, talking about um, careers and talking about young guns, very, very, um, very, very exciting and very, you know, good talent. Um, we're going to bring our next guest on who is um, itching, itching to tell his story. And he is an ex uh, St. Albans Dynamo Junior um, family, well known at Churchill Reserve. A big, big um, welcome to Marco Bullich. Marco, Thank you for joining hey, us mate. on the Off Crows Soccer Show. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's um, nice to have you on board, mate. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Now, now t you know, let's go trip down memory lane, Marco, and tell us um, your first first um, contact with, um, with, with soccer as a sport um, in the Croatian community. Dad, granddad must have been uh, very, very uh, um, influential in that. Tell us how it all started. Um. Well, I do remember just watching my dad play for Vukovar where he um, spent far. I don't even know where he was before that, so spent most of his life there. Um, goes on about his unbeaten run in the 442 magazine he's got. So I guess, yeah, a lot of the footballing um, things from the family come from him. I know my mum played a bit. Um, both my sisters were at St Albans. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much what got me into it. I was standing it's around. I was, I was more of a footy boy, actually, but because I was there basically every day of the week, I thought, why not make the change? Yeah, Taunch, it's a, it's, a, it's a holistic family view here with, with regards to the <laughs> game and Churchill Reserve. Like the, all of them, Amelia, your mum, Tina, yep. um, Christ, uh, sorry, Christina, the other sister's name, Christina, Christina yeah. Yep. Amelia, uh, otherwise known as Bratz to everyone else around the world. Yep. No, it's just they're, they're, it's just one complete sphere of football in the family. Yeah. Yeah. So, you that, look, early days at dinner more, right? Yeah. And then, uh, I spent up to, I think, under 13s it was there. Yep. So, you went, uh, under 13s you went up to Knights for Yeah, under 13s um, pretty much broke my dad's heart when I said I wanted to move to Knights. But, um, <laughs> but, like, but yeah. Let's, 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 just re let's just rewind. Let's just rewind. Did you just say before that you came from a footy background that you played footy? What yeah. happened there? Did, did, did you get clobbered across the back? You know when when you said I want to play footy. What, oh. what, what did the family say? My name is Luciano. A little bit. Like I was juggling between <laughs> footy, soccer. I was pretty good at footy, and then I was pretty good at soccer. So my dad goes, make a decision, and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll give soccer a go instead. Yeah. And that's that's uh, is that before or after you moved to the Knights or? Uh, that was well before. So yeah. I think around the under twelves, I, I stopped footy and just gave soccer my whole interest. Oh wow, fantastic! Yeah. And then thereafter, tell us tell us the, the progression of the career thereafter. No, oh, so from Dynamo, I uh, went to Knights where we had a very very strong team. We finished probably top three every year. I was there. I was playing. Played pretty much in every age group there. Played from the 13s, 14s, 15s, 16s, 18s, 20s, and then bench for the seniors all in a couple of years. Um, and, yeah, I was lucky enough for Andrew Marth to give me an opportunity to sit on the bench in the FFA Cup match against the Green Gully. Um, Rob Krejcic was also very good. Glenn Stefanak also. Ben Suri, club legend, also was my coach. We had Viduka coaching for a little bit. So all these little things were very good to um, experience at such a young age and really set me up for pretty much where I am now. Without Knights or Dinner War, I don't think I'll, I'd be where I am now. So, yeah. Josh, just, just, just listen to those names and, and yeah. that support yeah. network, right? How yeah. crucial is that for a young man? Yeah. Marco, tell me, when you're in, in involved in that environment, when you, yeah. you talked about names like Stabber and you talked about Dukes and you talked about, I mean, Glenn Stef Stefana, I think, is one of the most undervalued resources I've ever heard yeah. of in, in, in terms of junior coaching, right? And I think he gets enough credit, that man. Yeah. He's, done a, he's done a wonders with some young youth groups. Cracker, I've talked to my ears drop off about Cracker yeah. because I love the man. But just those names, how do you feel as a youngster growing up in that environment? 
Look, I, I guess you don't really realise the importance of having such good people around the club until you get to an age like mine or a bit older where you look back and you think, like, if I didn't have those types of people, I wouldn't be where I am. I was lucky enough to meet up with Viduka in, um, in Croatia when I went. Uh, we had a chat with him. He's very one of the most humble people I've ever met, considering mm. what he's done. Um, yeah. We also spoke with Joe Simonich there, who was, again, like you don't realise who you're actually talking to and the amount of knowledge they have and how much they can help you because they've been in your position before. So it's all very, very helpful to make decisions and gain experience, I guess. Now, you talk about Joe Simonich, and we had uh, we had Josip on our show on, on episode um, two, I think it was. Um, and for those of you that missed it, go to our YouTube channel and you'll see it. And, and, and talk about humble and talk about, you know, someone who's so down to earth. You, you mentioned Mark Viduka as well, another humble person. But Josip, you know, um, he was so humble, but he, was, he had this determination about him. And he had this kind of almost like a one-track mind of, uh, you, know, you know, we saw, saw that, that great tackle, that, that the very famous tackle was where he went one-track mind against that Serbian attacker and basically probably saved the, the game. Is that what makes a big difference for a young player wanting to achieve at the highest level? Um, you know, talent aside, good coaches aside, but is it the, that determination or almost that, I don't know, what, what would you say, obsession? What, what really puts these types of people completely on a different level to, to the average Joe Blow player? There's definitely an obsession with that. If, if you're not obsessed with the sport, then you're only going to be training two or three times a week, just collecting a paycheck pretty much. But if you want to make it to that next level, which a lot of people are trying to do, you've got to put in countless hours. You've got to sacrifice a lot. If people go on a parties, you've got to stay home. If you've got a game, if you've got training. I know a lot of kids my age, even a couple of my best mates, like, Every weekend, they're always up to something. I go, boys, I'm going to miss it. I've got, I've got to prepare for myself. Mm. Even I warm up with the team before the A-League matches. If they're warming up a day after, I can't do anything the night before just in case there's an injury. It's all little sacrifices, but it's everything Everything adds up in the end of the day. So, Yeah. Mm. Okay, so wise, just wise expand word. a little bit on that, mate. Um, so when the, when the night stays uh, were wrapping up, Victories come tapped on your tapped on the shoulder. Was it yeah. come and try, or did they really like what they saw and they said, "Here's a spot for you"? No, I mean, and then, was... then just explain a little bit about the commitments at Victory as well. Oh, Vic Victory has been massive, especially this year. Um, it all started, I think, after Coffs Harbour, which is the under 15s Victorian tournament. I got to play in that where I conceded one goal in I think about four or five games, so I did pretty well there. And then Victory, obviously. They um, uh, were interested, so I trialled for, I think, about two, three weeks, even a month maybe, and then I was lucky enough to earn a spot in the 18s at 15, and from 18s to the 20s to the NPL seniors for the last two, three years. So, Who was uh, the most influential there at Victory? Was it Brebs or someone else, um, another um, keeper coach? Or? I'd definitely say... Um, at the start of it, I know Peter's voice was there. Peter's voice is now the keeper coach for the first team, and I work with him every day. He's he's massive for me. Um, Brebs, he was probably one of my favourite coaches I've ever had. Um, what, made, um, what, what made him your fam um, mo most favourite coach? What what uh, characteristic? It, it was the way he treated every player as an individual. He he knew what the what the player needed like in terms of feedback, in terms of encouragement, if he needs a slap on the wrist, if he needs like a bit of a head slap to get moving. <laughs> like he, he knew every a little bit old school. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was in the 20s, of course. And now with um, the boss stepping in, Tony Popovich, he's, he's um, different to anything I've ever seen before. He's, he's really got everyone in order and ready to fight to the, the very end. Now you talk, you talked a slightly a bit about sacrifices and, and but just dive a little bit into that commitment on a weekly basis. What does it look like? Just say people who are trying to come through the ranks, 13, 14, maybe 15 years of yeah. age, hope hoping that an A League club can identify them. Explain what does it look like? Well, thirteen to fifteen, I was doing probably ten to twelve sessions a week. Um, I was at Maribyrnong Sports College who 
I was on a scholarship there and we trained three to four times every morning. So up at six, training by seven, then school by nine. We'd have a gym session during school and then obviously training at night. If I'll be at Melbourne nights, I'd have to be at nights. And then if I've got a Victoria training, I've got to go to train Victoria after or before the night session. So then plus the game of the week. And so all these sessions add up. And I guess that's the that's the difference between staying in an average um, environment to making that next level into a professional environment. Did you find the training repetitive or boring or monotonous, or did you did you actually approach each training session as a completely different, I guess, learning adventure? Or, or how, how did you, how did you how did you cope with that um, workload? I guess, oh, look, I was in bed probably eight o'clock. As soon as I got home, sometimes I wouldn't even have a shower till the morning. Just go home, sleep, eat well. My mum's fantastic. Fui, fui. <laughs> yeah, my mum's fantastic cook. She feeds me well, so I was always energy energized. I was always a, a energized kid, so energy was ne- never really a problem. I always loved training. Like I'd rather be training than waking up at six in the morning, going to work. So I looked at it like that. Yep. Let's turn now, out. Uh, to- go on, your Yeah, I was going to say uh, that we, we, we're seeing that progression coming through the juniors into into the A League structure. Um, you had an opportunity to go to Europe. Uh, yeah, how did that come mind. about? <laughs> there you go. How did that come about and what, what did you take in from that? Um, Europe was, uh, I was training at Udesh, which was absolutely amazing. What For what they got there, their, their team is a very strong team and I see a lot of lot of talented players in that team. Um, it came about uh, Joseph Tulina, Rob Tulina's son. He um, he was in contact with Joe, Joe Simonik, and they asked if there's anyone else and obviously I was interested and when I let Victory know, um, John Dunalitz, uh, he goes 100%, take the, take the opportunity. It's a, it's a awesome. real experience. Um, so everyone at Victory was very supportive, which was made my decision a lot easier in terms of going and experiencing everything they had to offer. So yep. from there. On the ground, yeah. on the ground what, is, what does that look like at Rudesh? Now that you've, you've talked about here, what that looks like, yep. what does it look like on the ground over there? Rudesh is – it's – it's not a shock, but when you get there, you're like, yeah, like this is this is what it's like. This is what it's about a bit. Like all the players, it's very very close. They're all, all like pretty much family over there. Um, they're a very young team. I think the squad average is yeah probably like 22, 23 years old, which is unheard of in a second division. Even yeah, in yeah, the they're pushing for yeah. promotion, right? So. Yeah, and they're they're second. They're one point off top, which is unbelievable for what they got. Um, the training, it's intense. It's not allowed to muck around there, no way. Um, you get back into line straight away. Um, the, coach, <laughs> the coaching's great. They have um, all different types of coaches. The keeper coach is fantastic. Um, you just try and take a little bit of everything, what you think is the best to improve your game. And if you take that from everyone, then you'll have a good game in the day. Now, now, um, Marco, like that interests me. Look, we often hear Dinamo Zagreb churning out great youngsters. We've heard Hayduk Split are churning out a lot, a lot of youngsters that are that are leaving. The junior team is, you know, playing in Europe. A lot of them just can't seem to get a go now um, in in the first. So they're actually leaving the club and going everywhere. But we all we we often don't hear about some of these clubs like Rudesh Lokomotiva Zagreb, um, some of these other clubs that have got these unbelievable academy setups. Um, could you compare it to anything, whether it's Victory, whether it's Dinamo, um, Knights, could you compare anything down under with what you saw at Rudes? And and what were the what were the striking, I guess, differences? I guess the, the big difference is um, the willingness to just play the young players, like throw them in and see if they sink or swim pretty much. Um, yeah, it's a lot more, I feel, players don't get... Not, not so much recycled, but they, they back more the older players in yep. to do the job where a younger person can do it, but it's just a case of trust. Um, I know we're lucky at Victory. We got the FFA Cup run where Anthony Leban, he obviously did amazing. A couple of the youth boys there were also played a huge part in that. Will Wilson played a huge part in it. Um, so I guess at some clubs you can compare, but 
it's really they're in a league of their own in terms of promoting the youth and just giving the young because you still have to be a good player, but they just throw them in and see what they can do, pretty much. And as a third just generation the, Australian Croatian, how were you received? How how did you find the language barrier, the cultural differences, um, and and how you know you said they were a very good, oh, I guess, family. How yeah. did they how did they accept you? They legit um, just came. I came in and there were open arms at the club. Um, I think Joe's very very. Um, very influential in that he said to us because we got to sit down and speak with him he goes if anyone's treating you poorly if anyone says anything you come to me and i'll let him know because i expect everyone to treat you like one of our own when you're here which was amazing like i know stories where people don't get that at all yeah, people yeah, yeah. quite the opposite but out of their shields everyone asked how you were doing uh obviously the pop individual boys they were unreal help there's a couple other Australian Croatian boys from Sydney there. So it was easy to make friends. The language barrier wasn't too bad because they spoke a bit of broken English and I could just mix and match words pretty much. Um, yeah. But yeah, open arms I was welcomed with, which was amazing. Phenomenal. Great. Excellent. What a, what a wonderful story, Tonch. And then look, yeah. I, I just hope that conversations like this, and we'll, we'll have conversations like this with Nikki Vladovic and Luca in a, in a couple of weeks. Cool, cool. Um, Yes, Lucas Corco and, and others around the, around the world as well. An opportunity for someone of uh, Marco, well spoken as well, to share what a, a what a journey looks like to get you to this point, and then some big decisions in life, I guess, Marco. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. do you want to push on and look for that uh, door to crack open so you can sneak into it? Yeah. Or are you happy? Or are you happy in the environment you're in? And then they're decisions you're going to have to make over the course of a year or two yeah. uh, to determine where you want to go. But we really appreciate you having to. You know, put these words together and share that insight so that other people who want to do similar can have a look at what that means. Yep. Now, on Saturday, you'll be down in Geelong taking on North Geelong, um, Croatian community backed club, uh, yourself, Anthony Lebun. Are there, are there any other Australian Croatians in that NPL3 yes. team? Uh, you got Thomas Karlovic, who's there, I think in the under 20s, but he'll be pushing for a senior, um, senior position as well, I reckon. Um, and I think that's about it. There's yeah. the three of us. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So that yeah. should be a great day out down at Alco Park. Um, anyone from Geelong tuning in at the moment, do go up to uh, Marco and, um, and just say hello and, uh, and thank you for coming on the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Oh, it's, thanks it's, for having me. I love hearing just the, the experiences, positive or negative, um, for, from pl people like yourself. And, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that will look back at this interview and say, wow, it's given me inspiration to, 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 to you know, give it a go myself. So, uh, mate, really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Give give Bratz a big hug for me. Yeah, we will do. Thanks. Yeah, awesome. That was uh, Marco Bullich, um, an ex-St. Albans Dinamo Jr., um, played at the Melbourne Knights, uh, had a go at Rudesh, and now he's at Melbourne Victory. Um, and I guess... Something that happened during the week, um, um, uh, Josip, uh, the big thing that happened during the week is the, um, the, the report, the final report that was issued out by the Astra Association of um, Australian Football Clubs, Professional Clubs, um, about a national second division. I mean, we're both going to say um, how important something like that is. But, um, and that has oh, – look, um, you know, I, for one, is, um, have I been turned off by the A-League? Maybe because of all those recycled players. Um, and when they do play the young players, it, there is a lot, lot more excitement. There's a lot, lot more intensity involved as well. And we're not getting enough of that in the Australian game, for my, for my take. Oh, I agree. I, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, A-League is becoming more and more difficult to watch, even to know if they're on this week or not. You know, they, yeah. And the change, the change of TV provider hasn't helped whatsoever. Um, I, I do see this not, not the final... Uh, nail in the, in the coffin or the final letter. I think there's going to be more to watch in this space. Uh, I do hope it does settle quickly, though, but unfortunately, there are egos and individuals in, involved that need to put themselves first, and they, they just need to understand that they're representing communities, they're representing players. Mm. Focus on them, get the results for them, and put yourself aside for a moment. Absolutely. On that note, we're going to um, thank everyone that has been a part of tonight's show. It was a, it was a cracker of the show, wasn't it, Yossi? Um, episode six. Thank you to St. Albans Dinamo Soccer Club. 
Um, they will be sponsoring another episode in about four weeks' time ahead of, an, uh, ahead of a, another Croatian derby. But next week, it's all about Strathmore split. Looking forward to that. And I can say that we will have an ex Socceroo as a main guest on next week's program. All I'm going to say is that person did have a link to the um, uh, um, um, Strathmore split um, club. So um, you can do your sums there, folks. But um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the exclusive Ozcrow Soccer channel on YouTube and also become a member. Um, folks, we um, we have only got two gold VIP members, Vladimir Zetovic and Marko Maric. Thank you so much. There it is at the bottom of your screen, www.patreon.com forward slash Ozcrow Soccer Show. Um, we have promised that once we do get to five gold VIP members, we will have a very, very special bonus for our members that they'll be able to get. No one else will be able to get. So do join up um, on mass, folks. Josip, start to check out all right here, though. What's, what's coming well, up? Well, we need membership, Tonship, because how else am I going to have to shave this thing off? I can't, <laughs> can't find the money for the razors, so... <laughs> <laughs> is anyone a franchisee of the Shaver Club or anything like that? Maybe we can get them to be a major sponsor. Uh, mate, look, just some more. Look, MPL action kicks off this week in Queensland, so I'll be looking forward to watching the uh, Gold Coast Knights MPL juniors hit out against Logan City. They do it here as a whole of club thing, uh, albeit across a couple of days. But so with the whoever the seniors take on, that's who the young lads are taking on as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, enjoy the week ahead. Um, I'll look forward to next week. It should be an absolute um, perla. Um, and each show is getting bigger and bigger. Um, we're getting so much. I mean, today went for, for 90 minutes, more than 90 minutes. In fact, we're, we're, we're in stoppage time, how, how long tonight's show went for. Um, once again, thank you so much to everyone um, and everyone in the comments section as well. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks Good to on our you. guests. Luck on Orch. Jazzy, yes, I'll shave it off. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. You have been tuning in to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Um, and we'll see you again next Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. Good night.